Hey, I'm Jozo, welcome to the 3D Sorcerer YouTube channel. Today I'll be discussing how to design the Boo faceplate for the Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer. If you're looking for the files, they're down in the description below. My only request is that you consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much and hope that you enjoy. So I thought before we started Fusion 360, I'd show you where I found the downloadable file. Uh, you have to kind of dig through some different documents and Reddit and things like that to find it. So I'll just show you real quickly here. So go to the Bamboo Lab Wiki, and then this is at their home page. Uh, you click on P1, and then when you're in the P1 folder, you go to P1P Mod Play Customization, and then see all their updates. Then you go all the way to the bottom, and you see the P1P frame 3D model. So we're going to download the P1P frame step file. Obviously, it's going to go into my downloads. And then here, this is my folder. I'm going to upload that into uh, this folder in Fusion. So now uploading. And then when that gets done processing, I will come back here in just a second. All right, so now the P1P step file has downloaded. I'll just open that up real quick here. And you see there's actually three separate models. So we have the AMS unit, the P1P without any uh, mod plates, and then this one has the mod plates on it. So we want to get rid of these other two. So one thing that I wanted to just show really briefly is the difference uh, selection methods within Fusion for those of you that are interested. So if you uh, select from left to right, notice that it only selects the things that are fully encapsulated, whereas if you select from right to left, it selects basically the whole body. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're uh, selecting things in Fusion. So I'm just going to go this way, select the whole thing, and delete. And now I wanted to mention this as well uh, briefly. So you would think if you just came here and selected this whole uh, model and click delete, you'd be fine, good to go. Well, the issue here is that there's actually a copied uh, component within this. This um, this model has a leg that's copied over into this model and that causes an issue. I guess they're linked together in the step file somehow. So what you need to do is basically manually go through and delete all of these components. But luckily, um, you can see here that's one of the, that's the leg that gets deleted. So this is the other leg, the CA1. So we can go ahead and delete that. And uh, if you go to, I think it's BREP 6 down to 36, I believe. Yes, that selects most of them. I'll go ahead and delete those. And then a couple others. So it's actually 4 through 36. And then a couple up here. So, there we go. So now we're uh, really kind of how we wanted it. The only other thing to consider here is that uh, this is not constrained. So uh, some of you may know that you want your model constrained, especially when you're making something based on this model. So if you just inadvertently you know, move this a little bit, that could mess with the model that you're trying to create. So there's a couple ways to do this. One, you can add joints uh, like normal, but the way that I did it, I think is a good way to do it in this situation, is to do something called a rigid group. So if you come here and click the uh, main parent component here, right click, and then you see a rigid group. So now, this is a fixed uh, group here, and they're all kind of glued together. And another thing you could do while you're at it is to ground the component. And now you can't really move it around. It's stuck to the ground, essentially. And then the last thing that we need to do is to start recording our design history. So uh, right click again, and then click capture design history. And now we'll see down here at the bottom, now we have our timeline. So if we do an extrusion here, uh, you get to see that operation here. And we can go back. So now we're good to go. This expands to show all the other components that we have already deleted, and that's our rigid group down at the end. Uh, that's just a grouping of all those, but now we're ready to design something. The last thing uh, that every good engineer must do is to make this uh, the proper color. <laughs> so here you can click Add, Edit, and then Appearances. Just for those wondering, you click A. Uh, you can also do it over here, but A is a shortcut and then we'll come down and make it a little darker. So.
So that is all that I did before I started to model. And now we'll jump into my first design and kind of walk you through what I did and the decisions I made while I was designing it. So going into this, I had three main design considerations. One was I wanted people to be able to 3D print it without fasteners or nuts or bolts or things that they might not have access to. Two, I wanted the design to be symmetrical. I think that that just looks cleaner in general. And then three, I wanted the faceplate to sit flush with the LCD screen. So those were the three main considerations I had initially. And uh, over time, I changed some of my design. You'll see that uh, as I go through it, but those were the three kind of principal ideas that I had about making the faceplate initially. All right, so now I'm going to briefly go through the design process of the faceplate. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you enjoy or if you'd rather me just skip over this part. I feel like uh, for some people it might be interesting just to see how I arrived at the final design. So that's kind of what I thought I would try to do uh, in a way that kind of makes sense for someone that might be trying to design their own thing. So, the first thing that I did, so I started uh, with the sketch, which is you know, how a lot of CAD starts, and I had this uh, in the mid-plane of the design, so I don't know if you can tell, but this is centered in the middle, and there's actually an origin point uh, there in the middle, so the reason I did that is now I can extrude symmetrically, so if I you know, extrude this way and then that way, everything's symmetric, and then I thought that eventually I could use this screen and essentially flip it and that's where I made the little faceplate design that you'll see later. So my idea here was to start here with a kind of a side profile sketch and you'll see here that I projected the LCD screen. So in Fusion you can project basically the outline of things onto your sketch plane which is what I did and then down here I thought it would be interesting and uh, look kind of clean if I essentially made this line parallel with the bottom of the LCD screen. So that's how I got this dis distance initially. And then since the top doesn't really have anything uh, to uh, line up with, I basically just made this uh, the same distance. And the reason that I did that, you'll see here, is now, uh, although the, the extrusion was through the LCD screen, which I'll, I'll fix later, the concept you can kind of see is that there's the same amount of plastic on top as on bottom so that also makes it more aesthetically pleasing and then something else that i was thinking about at this point was um we go back here the way that i was going to mount the faceplate and the way i ultimately did mount it was essentially use this arm that the lcd screen is uh, attached to to basically be the attachment point so Felt like that was a good place where I could slide something in behind there and uh, get a good attachment. And that way I wouldn't have to use any nuts or bolts or would have to clamp it on somehow with plastic or making a snap fit. So that ultimately worked out pretty well, but uh, that's the thought process behind that. And in this sketch, you can see that I also projected that here and here. And uh, that was because I knew ultimately I'd have to extrude the channel back out, which is something that you'll see in a second. So then I, as I already showed, extruded out symmetrically. And then if we just kind of progress along, one of the other things I did that I think was a good choice, and if you're first getting started, sometimes it's just kind of hard to conceptualize, but essentially what I did was I um, took the LCD screen and projected the outside border of it and then I made an additional body here uh, let's see so I made a faceplate body to cut out of this area and the reason that I did that is that at some point here I mirror over this uh, midline and that way I could cut out this this side. So essentially I recreated the LCD screen as a body there and then I mirrored this body over this mid plane and it ended up being over here. So, uh, so this is that mirrored body and then I, there's an operation where you can cut a uh, body out. So I took this body and cut it out of this main faceplate body and then uh, was able to have this basically cut out in the center and the reason that that was effective is because we have this mid plane and then that makes everything symmetrical and 
everything's uh, the same size, so I thought that was a good way to do that. The other things that I did uh, down here were not necessarily correct as far as the order of operations or anything like that. I was really just trying to get a design done to see you know, if it's something that I liked. And ultimately I decided, I'll go back a little bit, that this well, it was a good concept overall. Uh, there's a few things that I was having trouble with. One was this was too large to print in a single piece. Even if I placed it diagonally, the width of this made it basically uh, overlap on the edge of the printer, so it wasn't able to print in a single piece, so I had to split it somewhere in the center. An issue with that is since I only have one attachment point here with that LCD arm, it started to sag and it wasn't a very good uh, look. And additionally, there's some type of joint here in the middle which adds increased complexity. So ultimately I decided to reduce that down enough here where you could actually um, print this part, this outer part in a single piece because it fit diagonally on the print bed. So I thought that was an improvement um, overall just in the ease of printing and I think that uh, the overall aesthetic of it didn't really change that much. And so then I also just kind of this is me extruding out the channel there, and I started to make this uh, mid plate as well. And um, so you can bring that back so down a little bit. And like I said, don't pay attention to uh, the actual CAD process I did. There's way too many steps in this, and anyone that's even relatively knowledgeable of CAD would tell you that this is not <laughs> the greatest model, but my kind of process is just to get it done, get some iterations in. That's the good thing about 3D printing. As soon as you're kind of at a point where you're roughly happy with it, you can print it off pretty quickly and uh, kind of test it out and then make some changes based on what you find. So I like to kind of iterate rapidly and fail and then get better and improve upon it. And this is one of those things that I did um, that I realized from basically printing off a bunch of versions of it was that with this thinner border, some issue that I was having was when I put this, uh, when I slid it in, it, it started to bow in the center. So this would kind of go up and this would go down and have gaps and it wouldn't look quite so good. So I ended up making these little notches and the good thing about the notches was that uh, you could add this um, piece here, the mid piece, so that would kind of anchor it together like that. So that's what I did, and then I also added in the uh, bamboo design. <laughs> so that's what this center piece is. It's supposed to be a bamboo stick, essentially. I thought that was kind of a neat symmetrical thing to do in the center of the, of the face plate there. So that's really the main uh, background of the design. Uh, this is all operations that I did to make these uh, other pieces here and um, let's see bring that back so that's what I ended up with uh, but I wasn't really happy with how many operations this was I knew I could do it a lot better and that's what I find a lot of times is the first model I do is really rough it doesn't look very good it has a bunch of errors in it you can see there's this yellow one here uh, so I usually redo the model and I do it a lot better the second time so that's what I did here with the V2 version. Uh, just for reference, see how long this timeline is? You know, drag, and it's like multiple screen widths long. And then you go over to the second version, and it's barely even one screen width. And it has even more designs in it because I did the multiple faceplates here. So that just goes to show you that when you basically know what you're doing and you stop experimenting, you can really reduce the number of operations to capture your, your design intent. So that's what I did here. This is uh, the final version that I ended up uh, finishing up with and made some tolerance changes here. I printed off a couple versions and ended up uh, settling on 0.2 millimeters tolerance uh, between the yellow here and the top of the mid plate and this plate as well. And then 0.4 actually between here and here. And the same thing on this side. The LCD screen is still relatively 
uh, tight, but I think that has to do more with this LCD is not exactly the tolerances in this model, so I think that might have uh, caused the issues here with the tolerance tolerancing. So ended up making a little extra here, and it's still pretty tight on this side, especially. So uh, if it's tight, it's supposed to be that way. And then also made this a little wider, just so it was a little bit more prominent. I think it looks pretty cool, just personally. Uh, and then this is the single name version. I thought since I'm here really quickly, could show how to change the, the text here for anyone that's interested. So you open up nameplate one, which is this component, and then you go into the sketch, edit sketch, and uh, it'll kind of rearrange itself. And now we see this is the text. And to get into this actual text, you have to make it dark blue like that by clicking, by hovering over it, and then you double click. And now you're into where you can edit um, the text. Actually, this is a better text. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there you go. Now we have new text, finished sketch, and then it should extrude back. There you go. And then to fix the way it looks, A for appearance, that brings up this tab. And then these are just some that I've used. And, in order to just change this face, you have to change this uh, toggle to faces. And now it'll let me just select that. And now we're uh, back to what we wanted. So this is the single face. Really quickly, I'll run through the different faceplate options. So this is the single uh, one line text. This is two lines. So the thought process behind this was you could have you know, what printer this is and then your company name or something like that uh, if you're doing this for commercial purposes. And then this was the design that I personally like the most is more functional in nature. So the idea behind this was you could uh, put your glue stick here and then put your calipers or needle nose pliers in these uh, little slots and then this is slots for micro SD cards. So I thought that turned out pretty well. And I'll also provide this as a step file if you want to edit it and modify it. And also provide just a plain version so that it'll you have a blank slate to change as you see fit. And then this is the last version that I came up with. I'm sure there's a lot of different things we could do with it, but uh, this is just another SD card with seven slots. And uh, I think that it looks pretty clean with the, with the numbers there if you need a place to put a bunch of your SD cards. So this is the model. I thought that I'd just run through it really quickly and uh, show you all. And then I want to show you the actual printed versions. Hope that y'all enjoyed me kind of running through that. I'd love any recommendations or suggestions on what you would want as far as uh, what I talk about in the videos. Some of you might think this is really boring, but then other people might think it's interesting. So I just wanted to get y'all's feedback on that. And uh, now I'll jump over to another camera and we'll look at the actual printed versions. So I'll briefly demonstrate how to assemble the Boo faceplate. So first you want to slide the LCD off. So you slide it this way, pops off, uh, just opposite of how we assembled it when we first got the printer. Then we're going to slide the LCD screen through our uh, hole here. And then I like to kind of get it lined up and then you just slide it all the way over. It should fit pretty snug right there. And then I like to put it on uh, back on how it was. At this point, just make sure your wiring isn't getting caught. It should line up and then you push it over to the left. So now it's back in position. Uh, next step I usually do is to add the mid piece here and it will fit relatively tight so i like to try and kind of jam it up against the lcd screen and then it should kind of pop into place like so and now you can see it's all uh, pretty firmly in place and now all i have to do is just slide this in and then add your preferred face plate so now it's good to go All right, so here's a little more detailed view of the faceplate here. 
That's your glue. It fits in pretty well there. Let's see, you take out your pliers and then have an SD card. It's down in the slot. Uh, another thing you can do is just take that out, kind of all together, put it down. And uh, this is Galaxy Black and then Pineapple Yellow from Prusa. If you're wondering the colors. And this was, none of these were printed with AMS unit, so that's important to note. Uh, all that it is is this is recessed one millimeter, so we just add a pause at one millimeter and then a filament swap. So that's all that you have to do to get this effect. I think it looks pretty good. Kind of matches the sheet there. And then here is the memory card one. So overall, been happy with it. Uh, if you want to change this, it is kind of tricky to try and get it out. You can kind of get your finger under this one, but the other ones are a little more difficult. So I recommend just uh, taking this off. And then this will drop out just like that. Just for the sake of the video, I'll try and put this back on real quick. So back in, no issues there. Pick out another one, put that in place, and then add the final touch right there. All right. So this is the Boo faceplate. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'd love if you'd consider subscribing. Hopefully, you get some more good designs up here soon. And. Uh, Hopefully see you in the comments and again, thank you for your time and looking forward to doing some more designs. Thanks. Have a great day.